And what is up guys, Technicals here. We're back again today with the iServer KSO Pro, trying to reach the mythical 380 giga hash. Check the description below for links to everything that we talk about, all the parts that we use to get it up to currently 340 giga hash, not too shabby, but we wanna go higher. We wanna get the 380. So we're gonna upgrade those heat sinks. We're gonna do something with the fans and we're gonna try it again. We're gonna try to load the big dog, the big 380 giga hash to see if we can get this puppy Chuchin. Cast was at an all time high. This thing needs to be back online. It needs to be giving us every single drop of hash rate it possibly can. So let's tweak this thing a little bit, load the firmwares and see how far we can get. On the technicals, let's get into it. Okay, so just another baseline test before we put those new heat sinks in. Runtime. Two hours, 15 minutes, pulling at 332, 320, so about 330. We're not gonna be adding heat sinks anywhere else on the board. We're only gonna be swapping out the MOSFET heat sinks with these better ones. I'm not gonna go through the nitty gritty details. You take off the plate. You're gonna use a screwdriver that's got a good head on it. We're gonna remove this lower plate. All right. So hopefully this comes off with some ease and I don't disturb the thermal pads because I do not have replacement thermal pads. Ooh, that's on there. Gingerly, we're gonna pry with extra ginger. Pry, do not disturb. All right, I could have done without that. Let's uh, try to preserve these pads. You should just use new pads. Well, I don't have new pads, and these pads are like, these pads aren't the cheapest thing in the world, bruh. I'm gonna try to use, make sure I use the same size because I was getting great thermals. Okay, I'm trying to simulate real life, not fake YouTube life. Wow, that's interesting. All right, look at this. T-Swift, Daddy T-Swift, what's going on here? This is a real life CAPTCHA. Which one of these is different? I mean, I think it's very clearly there is something different about one of these. So this uh, heat sink, I mean, you could very clearly tell, is hued. I guess that's like a patina of some kind. Uh, I think we can say for certain that you know, maybe if it was one MOSFET that was uh, the culprit in limiting our hash rate because of overheating, I, I would put my, I'd put my money on this one with just very gentle pressure if I can twist it. Because I've got these fins that I can kind of maybe manipulate a bit and just kind of twist. God damn, I hope this works. I really don't want to fuck this thing up. Okay. Okay. Oh, please don't be broken. Hey. All right. These tweezers too, because they've got some, you know, springiness to them. Might be an issue because I, a lot of glue on this one. I, I kind of went heavy handed. And I, okay. Okay. Come on. Come on. I feel like John Hammond watching the egg crack in Jurassic Park. Okay. So this glue, I'm not going to try to get that shit out because that's hard and I'm not scraping it with a piece of metal. All right, so the new sinks. Uh, I think Serpent X and Mad Electron both used these, but they got the same hash rate I did. So I'm hoping because I've got a bigger fan that I'm gonna be able to uh, make better use of them. Oh! All right, so these are considerably larger, taller. I gotta be careful with them though because I don't wanna bend the fins. And I saw, I can't remember who it was. Apologies forever who it was. They actually spread the fins out. I'm not certain, you know, in, in my mind, I'm not sure that is really gonna make that big of a difference because these, uh, whatever the, the hell this, <laughs> well, this big block thing kinda impedes the flow moving through the board. Oh man, I know what I'm doing. This thing kinda impedes the flow through the board, so. You know, I'm not sure that spreading these fins out will make a difference. Uh, maybe I'll put a little space in between them. <laughs> Very light on the glue, because I'm not turning this thing on right away. I'm gonna give it a few hours, actually. So I'm just gonna kinda get like a little meniscus of glue out here and just kinda, oh, is this solidified? It's fucking solidified. All right, just the tiniest amount of glue. It's too much. It's too much. The dab will do ya. All right, now we want to orient the fins in a way that they can capture the airflow. Imagine you are a particle of air. Okay, you're a particle of air entering this thing. Ah! Like that. See? 
Easy. Just the teeniest, tiniest amount. I think that's all you need. Teeny tiny amount of thermal glue. I noticed, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, I was just kind of giving it one final visual look and they're basically all straight. These two kind of have like a, like a one degree pitch. And now I'm thinking, I'm not obviously not gonna do this, this is maybe for a later video, um, but what if we pitched these about 15 degrees? And that's kind of aggressive, maybe 10 and 10 degrees, but instead of them running straight like so, you, you put them on an angle, that way that they're, they're catching more airflow so it's just more airflow contacting at pressure uh the fins you know i guess it would create sort of a vortex behind the fin a little bit but the the air is moving so fast i can't help but think that pitching them a little bit to where it's just moving over the fins it's more time it's more lag time uh, may be an option, you know, that maybe that's something we'll explore in the future. We'll see how this one goes first. All right, so we got the KSO Pro back there. Rest in peace, headphone users, but hey, what do you want me to do? The fans are loud. It's gonna be loud, okay? So we've got the ice river monitor over here. Uh, we've got the uh, ice river web login down here. Doesn't really say anything, but I needed to fill up the window space. Ice server monitor is where we're gonna wanna uh, keep an eye on everything. Check my previous video where I sort of run through how to set this up, how to do all the firmware overclocking stuff. I'm assuming you've watched that. If not, watch it. Uh, so the Ice River monitor is gonna be able to give us our temp temperatures on our chips and the voltages on our chips. And as long as we're in the green, we're fine. Now we're currently running the 320 giga hash firmware and we're getting 330 to 340 giga hash out of the device. Now that's the max we've been able to achieve. In the previous video, I went through and did uh, started at the top and worked my way down and I ended up landing right where back where I was the 320 so that was with the short heat sinks now we got the big ones we got push pull and we're in an environment that's a little bit warmer uh, but the ambient right now 72 F uh, and that's what the device is taking in but last time we didn't have push pull fan so I'm hoping that makes a big difference we're gonna go ahead and load up we're gonna start with the big boy and work our way down and see if we can uh, Let's, let's go for the gold. Did I say 380? I meant 360. 360 is the, the the fastest one he uh, he he makes. Why did I say 380? Anyway, we're gonna go right for it. We're gonna load up the 380. I said 380 again. We're gonna load up the 360 and update. We're gonna have to give it five to ten minutes for us to get a hash rate reading out of the Ice River monitor. The Ice River monitor will disconnect. Operation succeeded, so that's good. Yes, we want to restart the miner. So we're gonna wait for the miner to come back up and then, yeah, there's our error. We're gonna wait for the miner to come back up, put our pool settings back in, and then wait five, 10 minutes for it to come back up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. He recommends running the, uh, the internal fans at 100%. So we're gonna do that, although I'm not sure how much added, uh, added airflow that's gonna give us with these two I mean, these are 5,000, I think they're 5,000 CFM fans. Two minutes in, you probably can't see it. I don't wanna move my camera because I got it all perfect focused on my face. But we're currently at 252, 253 watts. Uh, it's been about two minutes, so she's chooching. Uh, she's eating about 20 more watts than she was previously. So I'm hoping that translates into some success. Um, we'll find out. Price is right, losing sound horn, sound effect, soundboard. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. Doesn't look like the uh, 360 is going to work out. Uh, typically, when I load it in the higher hash rate firmwares, if they weren't going to work, the first hash rate that came up uh, was significantly low. It wasn't anywhere close to what we wanted. Uh, so 135 giga hash, that's not what we want. Um, I'm not sure that leaving it to let it ramp up is going to make much of a difference. I'll give it, I'll give it a minute. So it's uh, the miner's at 702. If we get to eight minutes and we haven't changed significantly, uh, which I don't think it's going to do, then we're going to nix that and we're going to go down to the 340 variance. All right, so it did not work. We made it to eight minutes and it's no dice cookie. Just so I'm clear, I did ask T-Swift about the L variants because when you get these firmware packages, there's an L variant, 340 giga hash L and regular 340 giga hash. I presume the L meant low power. I did ask him about it just so I was speaking correctly. And he mentioned that it's uh, the two are just voltage differences. 
One isn't always better than the other. Depends on silicon lottery. So uh, although he does advise in his text file to try the L variants first. So moving down to the 340s, we're going to try 340L. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. The 340L, no go. Let's try the 340 regular flavor, full flavor, full nicotine, full alcohol, uh, heavy mayonnaise version of the 340. Bum, 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 bum. Wow, 340 heavy mayonnaise version, no dice. 394 giga hash, so we're close. I was really hopeful for this 340 because, uh, you know, it was like one step above what, I was, what I've been running. Uh, so 294 giga hash, not exactly where we want to be. It's over the 10 minute mark, uh, so I'm not expecting it to really go any higher. Uh, temps and voltages look fine. Uh, the board out temp is 46. So I guess it's really just just those MOSFETs or silicon lottery or something like that. But uh, let's for the for the purposes, let's go to our 320L uh, and see if maybe there's some more success there, or maybe even better results on the 320 that we were running. Pre oh, well, it wouldn't be. We ran our baseline off that, so let's do it anyway. All right. So that's a uh, a big negative on the 320L. Coming up short at 247 giga hash. So we're gonna go back to where we were. The, uh, what was that? that? Was that the 320? Uh, so let's load that back in the full heavy fat mayonnaise version of the 320. Yeah, so that seems like where we're gonna end up uh, with this. You can see in the ice river monitor here, the hash rate just came up 327 giga hash. That's right in line to where we were. Uh, even with push pull fan, even with the better heat sinks. Uh, you know, there's probably more I could do. Maybe, you know, adding extra heat sinks to, uh, to the board would make a difference. But uh, according to T-Swift, it's all down to the MOSFET. Uh, and so if that is the case, I've got probably the best possible heat sink I could put on there, uh, on there right now with the best amount of airflow possible. And um, it's just too much heat for it to offload to, uh, you know, in a short amount of time. So it seems like we're limited. I mean, Possibly we could look into getting like some water blocks some little bitty baby water blocks and putting them on there I'm not doing that. There's no way to I could glue it to the board uh, But then you've got all that heat that's got to make its way through the glue into the water block And then I got to get a radiator and then I got to worry about water moving through this thing And it's a it's a four hundred dollar device and you know in CASPA with its emissions and With a network hash rate going up. Is it really worth doing all that for a KSO Pro? Probably not. I'm gonna go ahead and say that's the maximum we're able to achieve if someone else is able to get an even higher hash rate. I'd love to know what you're doing. This is the, uh, this is the January batch, January 24 batch of the KSO Pro, so fairly recent. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes much of a difference, but hey, I'm happy with it. 330, 340 giga hash out of a 200 giga hash device for really not that heavy of a modification, a fairly easy thing to do. So if you've got a KSO Pro, uh, I'd say, yeah, go for it. I mean, the parts aren't that expensive and you're getting, you know, like what, 70% hash rate increase on the top end, assuming your silicon lottery is good and all the other things, assuming yours is just like mine. So uh, if you like more videos like this, if you want to see me take a look at another device, just send me your device and I'm glad to do it. Otherwise, leave a like, leave a comment below what you think about this, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.